for my bubbles. <laughs> Mine was an epic fail. And welcome to Saturday night. Welcome to the groovy, woovy rainbow party that we're going to have tonight. Today we are saying thank you to our fabulous healthcare workers all the way around the world. I'm dressed in my colourful, I've got my tutu on, I've got my colourful hair, I'm all ready to go. I put some flags up and a banner. The kids and David are all in uh, rainbow stuff as well. <laughs> Except for Tom. Thomas is not here today. He went to a friend's last night and had a sleepover and clearly didn't sleep, so has come home. <clears throat> Certainly not ready for a rainbow party. So, that's beautiful. You may sit down. Thank you for my bubbles. <laughs> All right, I'm going to ditch the glasses and I'm going to ditch the wig, otherwise I will not be able to teach. But you can stay in yours, but I'm still in colourful. Let's get rid of that and that. What's my hair like? Probably awful. Perfect. So, we're doing a rainbow elephant tonight, people. The rainbow is obviously a symbol of uh, wonderful things after an awful storm. You know, to get a rainbow you need a bit of sun and you need a bit of rain. And it provides a beacon of light for the future. Elephants are a sign of good luck. Um, all, the way, all the way around the world. Um, and so it's fabulous, I think, that the rainbow has been used as a global symbol of thanks to all the healthcare workers. And um, so I'm delighted to bring this to you tonight. Ah, uh, David's clipping around. Okay, sorry. <laughs> we have um, really excited that we've trying some new things. So we are actually in the studio and I'm not in my garage. We had a beautiful friend that came around today and lent me a, a new modem, which is a Telstra modem. So I'm hoping that technically tonight we're going to have no problems at all. Okay? So um, we haven't got a mic at the moment because the mic seems to be interfering a little bit. We're on a learning curve, people, so you're going to have to learn with me. Um, but either way, uh, we are going to have a great night. See my beautiful earrings? Thank you, Tracy Gray, for those, my lovely rainbow earrings. Uh, we're going to have a great night, we're going to have lots of fun, and you're going to come away with a fabulous painting. Now, if you have not got paint, that is okay. You can use pencil, you could use crayon, you could use felt tip pens, or you could just do it as a pencil drawing, like a proper grey pencil drawing. Or you could use coloured pencils, you could use watercolours, you could use acrylics. Now, I'm going to paint with acrylics. But essentially tonight, when I do one thing with one colour, you do yours with another colour. Now, with watercolours, watercolours are softer and wetter, and obviously the colours merge a little bit quicker than acrylics. So if you are using watercolours tonight, tonight's painting, if you get it on your phone, so you, if you get a picture of it, I had it on my header, didn't I? So if you get a picture of it on your phone, you can see there's no blending. It's flat colours laid next to each other, okay? So if you're using watercolours, don't use too much water. You want to have a wet brush to get the paint um, <laughs> to come up, but you don't want to flood the paper like we did the other day. If you're using textures, oil pastels, crayons or pencils, when you lay your colour down, you're going to do it in one direction, then another direction, then another direction, then another direction. And that way you'll get, um, oh, it's called a cross-hatching effect, but essentially we're going to be kind of patchworking the colour together. Um, I'm going to show you what I mean. So I've done a quick draft of the elephant uh, on a piece of paper for you. And you can see this side here has been done with watercolours. This bit down here, the trunk, has been done with felt tip pens. And then this bit up here has been done with oil pastels. So I just wanted to show you, I'm just gonna come a little bit closer so that you can see all the different techniques. You get fabulous, fabulous color. Um, hopefully you're doing one of these options. If you're doing colored pencils, it's gonna be the same as the textures down here or the felt pens down here. Um, the oil pastels and crayons, you can blend two colors together. 
Um, you could do colours over the top if you want to make your own colours. The same with the watercolours, you could create your own colours over the top. But ultimately, we are going to be going for that patchworky kind of effect. All right? So there we go. So please, as always, let me know where you're hooking in from. Let me know where you're painting, creating, dialing in. Let me know if it's your first time, your second time, your third time, your fourth time. You're an avid user. Um, I'd like to say a big love up to Naomi and Noah in Cornwall in England, because this is their first time. Thank you, Naomi, for joining us. I had, I've been up since five o'clock this morning because I had a coffee while Naomi had a wine on her Saturday. Friday night, my Saturday morning, so I've been up to have, she's one of my besties from England, and I'm delighted that she's on tonight with little Noah, her little boy, having her first creative experience. Don't worry if you've never done it before, I'm very kind and very gentle, and nobody can see your artwork, so nobody's going to laugh. However, as always, what I like to say is, please, 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 um, these lessons are my time I am giving you as a gift. They are for free in a time of difficulty for us all financially, emotionally. All I ask is that if you don't mind and you're pretty proud of yourself, please send me a copy of your artwork so I can share it. And also, if you pop on You Create Art at Home, if you haven't done this already, please could you go to the review section and leave me a gorgeous review. If you don't enjoy it, that's fine, I am not everyone's cup of tea, as my husband will tell you. Some days he prefers a coffee, um, and that's okay, I'm okay with that. I am classically a Marmite kind of person, you're either going to love me, or you're not. And that's fine, if I'm not for you, turn the sound off and just do the art, or find someone else to follow. But if you are here and you're ready for a few stories, a genuine laugh, then uh, welcome, welcome. As always, I'll be taking the camera off the tripod, it will have a little bit of a wobble and we'll go round and see what the family are doing as well. Um, it's a party here tonight, so turn your music up at home. I can't have any music here, unfortunately, because otherwise um, Facebook is going to take the live down due to copyright. But put your music up at home. If it's the morning in the Northern Hemisphere, good morning to you. Have a coffee, a cup of tea, a glass of milk, whatever you fancy. If it's the evening, I say, good evening, enjoy a drink, Saturday night, let's get down to it. Alrighty, let's go. Okay. I'm going to move the canvas forward. I just moved it back so you can see my beautiful crafty moment that I did today with my rainbow thank you to say thank you to everybody that is working in healthcare around the world. I'm going to move my easel forward so it's bigger for you. And we are going to get started. Okay, so as always, when we're painting, we are going to be drawing with paint, okay? Very little bit of paint on your um, the end of your brush. We're going to draw with a blue colour. Um, don't put your brush really caked in, just a tiny bit of blue. Dip it back in your water, and then it should be wet enough to draw with. If you freak out about drawing with paint, then of course you can draw with pencil, but it will probably show through. If you are using coloured pencils or um, pastels or anything, if I were you, I would probably draw with pencil first because, you you know, it'll just give you a bit more confidence because the paint we can paint over, but pastels and stuff are a bit more tricky. So, off we go. So, I'm getting a, um, a pointy brush. The colours that I have got, it's a rainbow elephant, people. You can use whatever colours you want. The colours that I've got, pink, yellow, red, orange, blue and green, and then I've got black and white, okay? And I'm going to draw with blue. So I've just dipped my brush in to the blue. You can see it's not all the way up to the bristles, just a tiny bit on the end, all right? And my brush is nice and wet, not wet enough that it's dripping, but wet enough that it will move. If you keep your brush nice and moist, which I hate that word, as you know, if you keep it nice and moist, it draws really nicely for you. If it's too dry and too much paint, you'll just blob it on the page. So just a little bit of wet brush, tiny bit of blue. On, I cover my palette, as you know, in a bit of cling wrap, and that means it saves all the washing up um, and uh, it saves the paint going down the sink. All right, the first thing we're going to do, I'm just going to move my flowers, is 
we're going to do a dot at the top, a dot down the bottom, so we're marking where our halfway point is. This is really important for this um, painting because this painting is symmetrical, okay? Symmetrical meaning both sides are the same. So mark at the top, mark at the bottom, and halfway up either side of the canvas. If you're using paper, exactly the same. I'm using a canvas, but you can use paper. The kids are using paper, <laughs> and David's using paper. Okay. You guys all done that? Perfect. Okay, the first thing, I want you to envisage where the center point is. Now, if it's kids, kids, you might want to put a little dot there. So, draw a line with your fingers into the middle, and then draw a line down the middle and you'll find your center point. Don't put a big dot, but just a center point so you, because it's symmetrical, I want you to know where you are. If you're a very much a beginner, um, adults, do a center point as well. It might help you. Beautiful. Okay. The first thing we're gonna do is a big smile. <laughs> We're going to do a big smile or a big swooping curve. And it is going to go from this dot to this dot, but I want it to go a bit lower than that dot. I'll repeat that. We're going to go from this dot to this dot, but lower than that dot. So don't do it when I do it. Watch me and then do it. Got it? All right. So this dot to that dot. And that, wait. One other top tip. It's a bit like playing golf. I've used this analogy before. Or playing tennis. Don't look at your racket or your brush or your club. Because what will happen is it will go wobbly. Try and look here. And then look here. So you look here and look here. And you kind of draw in one motion. Okay? So ready? I don't want it too low, mind the way. Don't get right down here. Watch me. One, two, three and over. So a nice swooping curve. Off you go. Daisy's having a freak out. <laughs> I don't know why you're having, what are you having a freak out for? Nothing. It's just a curve. It's just a curve. It's just a curve. <clears throat> so guys, um, give me a thumbs up if you can also hear me okay tonight. I've got cider ready to keep my throat nice and moist. I'm using my big, loud voice, and hopefully you can hear me from here all the way to Cornwall. <laughs> big thumbs up, beautiful. Last week, um, last week the sound was intermittent, as we all know. And you know what? Since then, I have done, you would not believe, but I've actually done some Facebook Live training. I got up at 4 a.m. to do a training session with a lady from Los Angeles, who is very uber cool. Um, and she basically said the internet, and I'm going to take her word for it, she basically said the internet is held together with bubble gum and sticky tape at the moment. There's so many people using it that essentially it's all breaking down. So I'm going to go with that. I'm going to pretend or I'm going to, I'm going to say it's not my fault. And it, it um, I don't think it's not my fault. I think it's just that everybody is homeschooling, homeworking, home this. Everybody who's got some kind of business like mine is putting it all online. And so that's what's happened, basically. Okay, here we go. So we've done that line. We are now going to um, draw, essentially, the trunk. Now... You have to envisage, envisage children means you have to be able to look at it and see a visual line. The visual line is going all the way down here to that middle point. And I want you to go about two centimetres either side from your middle point. So we are going to go, I'm going to put a dot there and then a dot there. This is a really good idea. This is a really good idea so that you'll be able to see. And then I want you to get, so if that's two centimeters either side, I want you to do one centimeter either side at the bottom because we're now gonna get those lines to join 
And when you get those lines to join, it should taper in, which means it should go inwards. All right, so I'm just gonna get a bit more paint on my brush. Okay, here we go. We're gonna go from there. I'm gonna do it in one line again. Here we go. All the way down. So we make it wobbly. And then all the way down. Sorry, Daisy? Can you make it wobbly? No, don't make it wobbly. This is just, remember, we're just sketching our line work. And I know it's very geometric at the moment. There's, that, that's the point of it, so that um, we can see where we are. All right. You okay with that? Um, yeah. Yeah? Okay, we're now going to go, we're now going to put the tusks either side. So the tusks are going to go either side and they're going to curve over that trunk. Don't worry about the blue line, we're going to paint through this later. So, watch me, one tusk all the way down and curve at the bottom. And tusks are wider up here and they get a bit thinner, it's like doing a big banana but they get a bit thinner down until the very bottom of that tusk, okay? And then once you've done one tusk, you're gonna do the other tusk. Starting here, going down and around. Starting here, going down and around. So there's my two tusks. I know they look very stylized at the moment, but we will be going Oh, I love the colourful background. Thanks, Helena. I tried to make it rainbow look. Hello, John Pierce. Welcome, welcome. Are you painting or are you just watching? I think you are just watching. Trust me, he would leave me. And whenever you're ready, I would like you to give you give a clap if you can. I'm sure there's an emoji clap. Yeah. If there's not an emoji clap, yeah. there is. Daisy's saying there is. There is an emoji clap. Let's have a clap or a heart for the healthcare workers. Let, let this video show how much love we have for them. Let this video show that we are saying thank you. This painting is for you. We are getting our creative on. So let's thank everybody and give, there we go. Thank you, Joe, for some claps. John is wa wa watching. Thank you, David, for your hearts. Beautiful. All right, so we've got our tusks, we've got our trunk. Bear in mind, we're just sketching this out, people, yeah? Thank you, Holly Mitchell, for your love. Thank you for sharing the love to everybody. Now, the legs of this um, elephant are just gonna go either side of our trunks, okay? Our, our tusks, not trunks. Either side of our tusks. So watch me, I don't wanna go too wide, I'm just gonna go from there. I'm gonna follow my tusk. And then when my tusk goes around the corner there, I'm just going to go all the way to the bottom. So I'm going to do the same on this side, go in parallel with my tusk, and then I'm going to go to the bottom. I'm just drying out there, I need a bit more paint. There we go. Good job everybody. Thank you Natasha for the claps. We are saying thank you to our healthcare workers all around the world tonight. They are doing it tough and we are very appreciative of everything they are doing in this fight against Corona. So at the moment, you're all thinking, hmm, that's a dodgy elephant. Yep, so am I. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. But you need to trust me. Those of you, it's your first time. Evie, thank you for the clap. Those of you, it's your first time. We will get there, people. Sip and paint is a little bit of bits and pieces, and we just have to take it slowly. Okay. Now, the head is up here. This is the bottom of the ears, and I know you've got them going right through, but we're going to paint through that later. This is the bottom of the ears. I want to draw, you know how the tusks are in, kind of, it's a bit like, if this was a tusk and it was in my nose, <laughs> it's a bit like the nostril bit where the tusk goes. Okay, so you need to kind of make it a bit of a curve, not too much of one, 
and if that's my centre point, I'm just a bit higher, and I'm just making a little curve there, because that's the socket that our task is going into. I'm going to do the same on the opposite side. That's the socket that the task is going to go into. And when we paint that, we'll try and make that a bit more three-dimensional. Now, I'm looking at mine, and mine's a bit too curvy and a bit too short, so I'm just making mine a bit longer. Follow me, if you've got them that short, they need to be longer people, so just make them a bit longer. Do they need to be taller than that? Maybe? Yes, I have them too short. So there's my centre point, and it is about more, just more than double that. So if I show you my hand, it's about from the, my wrist, about up to my thumb, about as long as that. I just drew them a bit short. You have to remember that when I'm painting, I'm painting on angle, whereas you're flat onto it. So sometimes I see things a bit skew with. Okay, here we go. At the moment, it looks really strange, I have to say. It looks like two fangs almost. And a big random smile. Okay. If that's the top of where the tusk and the trunk go, the next bit is to put in the eyes. Now, you feel like, because of the scale of it, you should have big eyes. But elephant's eyes are very small, okay? So, one eye is gonna go here, and we're gonna start off just with a circle. So I'm spinning my brush round and round, and I'm gonna drop down a circle. I'm gonna go over the other side and do exactly the same. They are, they have, do have small eyes. They do have small eyes. That looks really weird. I know it looks weird, but that, it, this is right. I know this looks terrible right now. This looks like the worst elephant in the world, but that's okay. David's looking at it, looking. It looks like did. the elephant's head is the whole canvas. This looks like the elephant's head is the whole canvas, but in a minute we're gonna do this part of the head and it'll start to look right. Okay, the eyes, so in a human eye is like this, isn't it? It goes an, uh, an oval shape like this. But the elephant's eye is an, on an angle. So if necessary, if you're doing paper, you can turn the paper if that makes it easier. But essentially you want to do the eye shape and you want it to go like this. So it's up and down at an angle, okay? Up and down at an angle. And actually that is too curvy, I need a cloth. I've done that too much like a human eye. So let me just get my cloth and rub it out. So that bit is right there, but it comes at a much shorter point, like that. And the same on this one. So at an angle there, oh. but into a very short point there. Everybody is looking at this thinking, this is the worst. It's not, honestly, people, trust me. Trust me, trust me, trust me. Trust me, I'm a painter. It's a fun way to have a day. All right, once you've done that, we're gonna just put some circles underneath the eye. And this kind of gives the bags of the elephant's eye. This will help to sort of make it look a little bit more. What's the matter? <laughs> Daisy's laughing at my elephant people. I'm not laughing at mine. I'm not happy about that. So all we're doing, remember, is sketching it in. Just going to get that's a bit long there. So I'm just going to an upper eyelid, a couple of curves underneath. All right. Now to make it to make this sort of sit together, we need to put the outside of the elephant's head in. And the outside of the elephant's head, it's like a big. Um, Mm, what's it like? It's like a straight down and then a letter C, I guess. No, C's that way. Letter, what letter goes that way? C. It's like a backward C. I can't think what letter goes that way. Because cat goes that way. It's like a backward C or half an O. So watch me. We go down round one side and then you're going to go round the elephants and back to the nose. Okay? 
back to the trunk. So straight there, round the eye area, and then back to the nose. Is it and straight down at the top? Straight down at the top. Curve round the eye is. This is essentially where his skull is. Do we go all the way up to the top of the canvas, the paper? Uh, no, you don't. You do not go all the way to the top. You leave a little bit. And then I'm actually just turning it, curving it in at the top, rather than it being straight. The only reason why I wanted you to do it straight first is so that you add a down before you go round. But then just curve it in a little bit. Hopefully we're starting to coming through now. A little bit, a little bit. A little bit? Awesome. Little bit, a little bit. So where are all, all our painters from today? How many have we got coming in from Cornwall? How many have we got coming in from Brisbane? Let me know where you're painting from and we'll share the love. All right, so we have got a big outline and the reason why we've drawn it this way is so that um, it's very, very easy for you beginners to get that shaping. Now we need to start making him a little bit more like an elephant, yeah? So, the ears to start with. We're gonna shape them by creating more of a wobbly edge to our ear. So, you can bring it down a little bit and create the folds of the ear like this. Just to create that sh different shape on where the ears are. Don't worry about these lines, we'll be painting over those. We've got Naomi in Cornwall, we've got Alicia in Brisbane, Solitaire in the Gap, hi Sol. Susie in the West End, hi Susie, how are you? Pardon Dave? John Pierce, Emerson Green in Bristol. I know Pam, my mum, she's hooking in as usual. From Bodmin, I'm just going to make that trunk a bit wider, it looks a bit thin there. Okay, remember that as with always, I edit as I go, and that's fine. Everybody needs to edit as you go. When you see things and they don't look quite right, you just change them up. Okay, we need to, we need to work this trunk out because uh, the, 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 the trunk at the moment is too flat, so we need to give it some dimension. So we're going to start putting the round, the curvature in, because this will help us when we're painting. Essentially, we want six curves up to that halfway point. So I'm starting down here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six curves up to that halfway point. And then I'm going to put three above. And they're a bit wider. So one, two, three. Definitely starting to look like an elephant now. I can see the elephant. Daisy, you can see the elephant. Awesome, awesome. I thought the ears were going to be whole worth why I was confused. Well, once we've finished the drawing, I'll take the camera around and we'll have a look at what you're doing. How are you going, David? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I would love you to send me pictures. If you're all looking colourful and gorgeous, please send me a picture of how gorgeous and rainbow you look. I've just had a beautiful picture of a tie-dye dress. Love it. Um... If you're looking, or even just send me a picture of your setup at home. It's always so fabulous to see how you set yourself up. I love it. It's so hot. It makes me so happy. Okay. Now then, we want to just change the shape of our trunk a little bit. So watch me. Where, where each um, arch is, we're just going to alter the shape. So watch. I go round and then I join up with that curve. I go round and I join up with that curve. Then I start just under that curve. I go out. So we're basically creating a fold in the skin. Okay? We're creating a fold in the skin. 
instead of having just a straight line on the outside look, you've got more, it's a bit like a, a tree trunk in a palm tree. That would be a good analogy to say. A bit like a tree trunk on a palm tree. Just got that more of a loose shape. Now when you get to these ones up here, you don't need to do that. It's only where that trunk is that you need to do that. And the last shape we're going to do is an upside down curve where those trunks, where those tusks come out. So an upside down curve, semicircle, where the tusks come out. And that will help to give some dimension to that. Coaster of fun for me. Last week I was on the radio. Thank you very much to Veronica for um, nominating me for Thank You Thursdays. I got um, an interview on the radio um, saying thank you for all the work that I was doing. Work? It's just a hobby. Well, it's just fun, really. But thank you for everything that I was doing with um, giving all these art classes, and that was wonderful. And then this week I started to start researching next week's art class. And next week we're going to do Peru because one of my beautiful ladies asked if we could do Peru. And I had the most amazing experience because I started looking at Peruvian artists. I found an artist that I really liked. David had a real request, could we do something with a black line because that makes it really easy. Um, and, and I kind of agree with him. Very, very bold pattern stylistic pictures for beginners are the way to go. So I, start, I found this beautiful painting by an artist in Peru called Enrique Buzamante. Sorry if I've, spelt, if I've pronounced that wrong, I don't have fluent Spanish. Anyway, I messaged him on Messenger um, and he messaged straight back and I messaged him because he's still alive and I thought the least I can do is ask him if we can use his painting because ultimately I didn't want to get done for copyright. So I messaged him on Messenger, he messaged me straight back, it was fantastic. And he said, sorry, I don't really understand. Can you translate? So went on Google Translate. I'm hoping Google Translate didn't actually say. My name is Karen. I am a goat from the Outer Hebrides or something. I hope it translated what I said, which was a, essentially a long, big winded story that said, I'm painting, I'm doing this. This is what I'm doing it for. This is how I do it. This is what's happened in my business. And we'd like to paint your painting. And I had a half an hour conversation with this amazing Peruvian artist. He's 82. He's made his hand, he's made his own mask, hand stitched with running stitch. This little old bloke who is so cute. And he is obviously very, very re well renowned um, in his little town outside Lima because the whole town is full of his um, murals all over the wall, all over the walls. And he um, has, really done this whole lovely series of paintings that feature pigeons um, and at first I thought well that's a bit weird but when you read the story he talks about how pigeons group together in family groups huddle really close and they huddle together when they feel nervous worried if there's a storm coming to protect each other and I thought how fabulous is that to have that as our symbol for next week's painting I'm so excited the painting is bright and lively and energetic and effervescent and I cannot wait to share that with you. So that's coming next week. All right, in the meantime, let's get back to our effervescent elephant uh, because he's pretty cool as well. All right, so we've pretty much sketched him out and I'm pretty happy with that sketch. Uh, there's nothing else I want to change. So I'm gonna wash my brush. If you've only got one brush, wash it really well. If you've got two brushes, then you might want to switch to a clean brush at this stage. <coughs> and like with any sip and paint, we have to go in stages. And the next stage is to paint the tusks in white. Now, if you are using watercolors, then you obviously can't paint white. So this bit, you're just gonna watch me because you won't be able to paint this. If you have got some lines that you need to go over, the way you get rid of those lines with watercolour is just to wet it 
get a tissue, a slight, uh, like a kitchen towel or a piece of toilet roll or something and just remove those extra sort of um, lines that you put in. If you are using textures or coloured pencils, you should have a white or a very pale colour in your, um, in your set. Um, oil pastels and crayons will definitely have a white. Uh, depends on your coloured pencils and your textures, whether you do or not. If you're using textures as in felt-tip pens, um, you could just leave this bit if you need to or use a skin tone if you wanted to change it up. We are going to paint some extra colour on that, but we're going to wait for that white to dry first. Now hopefully you can see that white. I've got my studio lights on and I think it's glowing nicely. Yeah. Now your, your expectation in this painting is to just paint um, kind of the eyes and the nose, but the way we have to tackle it is we have to paint it section by section. So we're going to start off painting the white first. We're going to go through the lightest colours through to the darkest colours, okay? So with my white, I've done my tusks. And then above here, there is an area which is going to be white. Now, if you can't see this, uh, just give me a message saying you cannot see the white. It looks like in my view, you can see the white because it looks like it's brighter than my canvas. Yeah. So, need to get paints then, this will be fun. Okay. Thanks, Jamie. Get some paints and join us next week. If you want to paint this one particularly, I'll be saving it after the live so you can always go back. If any of you are struggling to keep up, you know the drill, I'll save it and straight away you can paint it later. So hopefully, let me know if you cannot see this white. You guys, can you see the white? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Pardon, Dave? Joe said we can see it. Perfect. Thanks, Joe. So you can see the white. You can see everybody's painting. So this is a style that I use very often when I'm doing the sip and paint animal classes. And everybody's painting, I need to tell you, will be different because there is no pattern that we're following, which means that you will put on the colour maybe in slightly different places to everyone else. That's okay, by the way, all right? We want people to have a little bit of individuality. So there's a big patch of white there. It's a bit like a triangle, that piece there. And then a bit of a smudge and a curve down towards that trunk. Okay, this um, crease here, I'm gonna put a splurge of white there. A nice highlight. Then I'm going to put just not at the very corner of the eye, about a centimetre away from the corner of the eye. I'm putting a lump there. And I'm just going to go down towards the crease and then up over the crease. Now, every time I paint this at other classes, people always think this is really weird painting it and they don't really understand it. You don't need to understand it, you just need to follow me. You have to kind of trust the process at this stage, okay? So we've done that white, I've got a white here, I've got a white there, and around the eye. If you're doing this in pencils or drawing, then why don't you just get your pencil and draw around the area that you are not going to colour into. That would give you the space that you need to understand what to leave. Okay, so we've got our white there. I now want to put a white underneath this little crease here. You can see the white is all in this half. So remember we've got our dot there, we've got our centre dot there and our bottom dot there. All the white is on this half, which means the light is coming from this way of our elephant. I just need to get some more white because I've run out. Once we've done the white, I'm going to go around and see the fans. Sugar, I've just what? I just kicked the tripod. I'm so sorry. Can't you can't see it. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Just kick the tripod. Ugh, there. Sorry about that. Hi, Catherine. Glad you can. Yeah, glad you've jumped in. 
Are you painting today or are you just watching? Oh, hang on, I need to move it back there. There, is that better? All right. So my last bit of white was just there, underneath that crease there, which is underneath uh, the center point one. And then under each of these creases, I'm just gonna put a blob of white there, a smaller blob of white there, a smaller blob of white there, and a small blob there. So you can see they kind of got smaller as they went down. I've done mine quite thick. I quite like the texture when you have the white on the painting quite thick. If you can't make yours thick, then don't worry. I'm just putting an extra bit of um, white on my tusks because I've got a bit left over. Harry, what's the matter, sweetheart? Mm. Why is it bad? Too big. Do you want me to help? Mm, I have two thick lines. Two different lines. Okay. Oh, no, it's very nice. Do you want me to get you some extra paper that you can put your ears in? Mm. Well, I can do. You need some more white. Let me get you some more white. the proportions of your elephant are excellent okay they're really really good but your ears are missing so we're just going to add in pardon? so we're just going to add in i'm going to show everybody in a minute what we're doing can you go and get the other um the other can you go and get the other board over there harry please I don't want the camp, I don't want the easel, I just want the board. And the clip. There, can I just keep painting? It'll be wider, but we can just glue it together. It's fine. Just pressure, really, that's all. All right, we're going to... Harry just had a little bit of a wobble there with his drawing. So we're going to go and show... I'm going to go and show you what I did to rectify it because there's always a way around these things. Here's David. David's looking very colourful tonight and he's ready for his thanking everybody with his rainbow look. How's your elephant going, David? Awesome. Looking very good. Hazza's got his rainbow garland on. Now, he had done his head, and I have to say it's all in proportion and looks looking fantastic, but he didn't have room for his ears. So all I've done is got two more pieces of paper. We've put them either side, and now he's got room to do gorgeous ears there. Well done, Harry. And Daisy is my little rainbow unicorn here. How's your painting going, Daisy? Good. I had, like, mistake lines. So That's I okay. Put white over it. That's fine. You can definitely put white over it, because we will be painting over all of those later... You can see my lovely thank you sign saying thank you to our healthcare workers. Thank you. All right. So you can see the rainbow elephant is coming on, but the only color we've done so far is obviously white. So let's get on and do another color. Hello, Sarah Bogus. Are you, are you watching or are you painting? You're very welcome to join us and have a little paint. Okay. The next color we're going to use is yellow. So when I, use, when I change colours in this painting, I don't wash my brush out, I just keep the white in there. So I'm going to start with yellow, and I want you to do exactly the same, I want you just to paint where I paint. So the first bit of yellow is underneath that white, and don't mix it in, okay? Don't blend it. You want to just um, let it sit there. It's kind of laid right next to the white, okay? So I'm using the side of my brush. 
and I'm just kind of lying it on. If you're using watercolour, then obviously just paint in little patches. If you remember when I painted that rainbow dog the other day, we painted in little patches for that, didn't we? So you're just going to follow me where I paint my colours. And I want you to paint the same. So you can see I'm starting to paint over that guideline that we did when we were drawing. So that, yeah, that blue line's gone there already. And I'm going to put a piece of yellow there. Remember, this is where our light's coming from. So all of this side here is where it's all yellow. Making sure I don't mix in with the white. I need to go and get some more yellow. Guys, if you need more paint, if you run out, then just um, help yourself. I've put my jump on. Don't get paint on it. Oh, I'll roll up the sleeve. You can't go wrong with where you're putting your paint on because your paint... Um, Oh, you've got a bit of a you've got a bit of um, um, love happening here, Harry. Someone, uh, CB, um, C Reese just said, "Poor Hazard, your elephant is better than ours." So there you go. <laughs> I'm hoping all of you are enjoying yourself. Enjoy the elephant. He's a happy soul. I love elephants. We were supposed to go and see the elephants in Sri Lanka this year. Um, we. Uh, my niece is getting married. Uh, she was supposed to be getting married last year, but the wedding was cancelled because of the bombings. So we rescheduled for this year, and sadly it's going to be cancelled. Well, not cancelled, postponed again. And uh, we had, as a family last Easter, we had adopted a couple of elephants in a sanctuary in Sri Lanka. And uh, we had three of them with the same sort of personalities as my three children. And they were... Well, they don't really ride elephants anymore in Sri Lanka. Um, it's kind of, it's a bit like shark diving. It's kind of frowned upon. But they, you do what's called an elephant walk. And you go and feed them. And then you walk them down to the water hole. And you give them a good scrub. So the kids, hopefully if we get to Sri Lanka, we'll still have our flights. We'll have to cancel the flights and rebook it. Um, and hopefully we'll get to that elephant sanctuary another day. Okay, just a tiny bit of yellow over on this side, not so much as on that side, because like I said to you, this is the shady side, so this is the warm side, this is our cool side. So, and up here over the eye. Obviously, if you've got this picture from my um, Facebook page, and you're wanting to work faster than I am, you're very welcome. The elephants in Sri Lanka are amazing. So beautiful to see them splashing in the river. Oh, I know, Helena. My kids are dying to. We were desperate. We are desperate to go. But Sri Lanka is one of the countries that David and I didn't get to on our round the world trip when we went for three years. We did get to India, but we didn't get to Sri Lanka. And I have to say, we, were, we are dying to go and see them. The last time I saw an elephant was probably in Thailand, David, wasn't it? And actually, back then in 99, you could ride elephants, and we did actually have an elephant ride. But uh, it's, it's very much not the done thing these days, isn't it? So you can see where my yellow patches are. I've just noticed that I've missed a white patch. So I'm going to add in one more white patch. And this, if you haven't, if you've got another brush, just use the other brush. It's just underneath that yellow patch there on the brow of the eye. Okay? on the brow of the eye. So I just missed that. So if you've got another brush, just add in that last little bit of white there. Beautiful. Can't wait to see your paintings, people. Hopefully you've got some music playing, you're having a bit of Saturday fun. Oh, you okay? Okay. 
So the next colour we're going to use is orange. Now I don't want to use, so in my palette I've got bright, bright orange and I want to have a second colour orange. So use your yellow brush, use your orange together, mix it together and you'll get kind of like a tangerine orange. So I'm using my yellow brush, I'm mixing it with the orange and I'm getting a tangerine yellow, uh, orange. I don't know if tangerine is an Australian fruit or not. Let's say mandarin and then like bright orange is the punchy colour. So I've just mixed it in the middle of my palette look. Um, and just got that tangerine colour. So if you're using textures or um, uh, pastels or something, try and find a paler orange. If you've only got one orange, just use the one orange. Okay, so we're going to add in the orange here. We're going to start to build up the second colour. So this is just, a, and these are very much laid next to the yellow. If you need to make it a bit thicker over those blue lines to get rid of the blue lines, then please do. You can see when I'm painting, look, I'm, my hand is at the bottom of the paintbrush and I'm kind of using it a bit like a stamp. I'm not really doing this. I'm not really drawing with it. I'm kind of just using the brush to sort of stamp the, painting on, the paint on. And that way you don't kind of over, over brush it, I guess. You're just kind of dropping the paint onto the canvas. Because we don't want to blend the colours, we just want to lie them on one after another. You know, people think that this painting looked really hard, and you know, the hardest bit is in the drawing. Once you start painting it, it's just laying on colour one bit at a time. Following the colour waves, just going one bit at a time. I need some more yellow. How come I need to keep on getting paint? Have you guys got enough? Yeah. That's a good colour, Daisy. That's a good colour, Harry. We get the exact same table. That's a, that's a good um, colour. David, that looks good. You might just need a bit more, though, because there's quite a bit of orange to paint. It might be because you're making it so clumpy, and ours is Oh, easier. yeah, possibly. That is true. When you paint on a canvas, you tend to use a bit more paint than paper. That is very true. Okay, so I'm just looking at the rest of my ear. I'm just adding a, a bit more orange there. A little bit above the kind of, I'm going to call it the nostril of the trunk because I don't really know what to call it. I'm sure it's got a technical term. I just don't know what it is. Put a bit of orange there just above that eye. And now I'm going to put orange here over the top. What's this bit? The curve, the, the top curve of the trunk. Where that white is, a bit of orange there, over that little trunk. You know, if you don't put it in exactly the same areas as me, is it gonna matter? Of course it's not, not at all. It's not gonna matter at all. But all I'm trying to do is get that hot side, because in a minute we're gonna get the cold side. And that's gonna really, really sort of punch our picture forward. All right, there's a lot of whispering going on, my family. What's going on? You all right? Do you need help? No, I'm helping you. All right, thank you, Daisy. There's a bit of orange over in this side where we have that little highlight on the, on the ear there. I've got a bit of orange just happening there. And then a couple of flecks of orange just on the curves on this side. This is still our pale orange, yeah? We're going to use our, our bright orange in a minute. Am I going too fast, everybody at home, or are you all keeping up? Do you need me to slow down? Let me know. Give me a thumbs up. Send me a message. Actually, message is coming through in here. Uh, Libby is watching. Welcome, Lily. Welcome, Caroline. Caroline, have you started painting yet with Katie? Come on. I'm giving you um, so much energy so much of my energy to get painting with Katie I know you want to 
Give me a give me a clue. I want to see you do a piece of art together. You don't have to use paint. If you're worried about the mess, you could just use crayons or pencils. Thank you, Eva. You said it's a good taste. I'm pleased about that. I'm just gonna get myself another cider. Thank you. Look at these. Low sugar cider. Five seeds. I was pretty impressed when we found these, or David found them. Because uh Certainly lockdown is not doing much for my waistline, that's for sure. Not quite keeping up. All right, I'm just going to give you a couple of minutes there to uh, see where all that orange and yellow is. You all right, Harry? Of course. I just want to show you something, guys. Hang on. I need to take it down off the tripod. Look at this. So today, I had a load of ladies come to the studio to pick up art materials that I'd went to the art shed. And I had some chocolate brownies bought, to me, bought for me and this gorgeous parrot cake that we're having tonight. Oh, my. Delicious. You, it, how, how delicious? So good. How good? So good. so good. Harry's having a second piece. So Get in there, Harry. <laughs> yeah. Yummy, yummy. How good, David? Superb. Thank you. Superb. While I've got it out of the camera, out of the tripod, let's have a little look. Oh, very nice, David. David is secretly getting his creative on here each week, I have to say. Mm -hmm. You're doing a good job. Thanks, Just gave him a little kiss. I hope that's not... Harry's is looking much better. Now he's got his ears on. Really good. I think I should take them off. I think I uh, no, no. I think I think you need to get your ears wider. Can I help you? Yeah. So what you need is, I'm just going to show you. Those ears on yours need to go like as far as that. No, I didn't do the, how the big um, how the ears are big. No, that's all right. You've just gone giant on your scale. But if you put them like that, look, that suddenly looks oh, yeah. like the right scale. Oh, yeah, that looks better. So there's Harry's. Daisy Bessel, looking good, Daisy. Very nice. All right, yummy, yummy cake. Deebs, did you want some more cake? Oh, yes, please. Yes, please. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to serve up a bit of cake for my husband. Oh, yum. Look at that. Amazing. I'm afraid I can't show you the, um, the chocolate brownies because they were eaten today. And this is the problem, isn't it? We're all eating too many yummy home-cooked foods. It tastes so good. All right, let's get you in the tripod. Right. Okay. I'm not going to wash my brush. I'm keeping it with the yellow in it. And we are going on, people, to bright orange. Do -do -do -do. All right. So you can see I've just got my yellowy brush in there. I'm just going to swirl it round in the orange and we're going to go straight into some bright orange. Starting to look like a rainbow, kids, isn't it? Hopefully you're enjoying this painting. So beautiful to have things that are so bright. Does it matter if we put it in different places too? No, if you put it in slightly different places, as long as in principle... You've got a warm side and a cool side, Daisy. It will be fine. All right? So again, you can just, you can follow me or you can kind of go a bit rogue if you want to. I'm not gonna tell you off. At the end of the day, this is your painting and if you wanted to paint it all in purple, you could. No, I would. Pretty good. We start to, now we start to get these colours, it starts to fill up quite quickly, you know. I know it seems like you haven't done very much, but actually, you know, it's probably only half an hour left to go and then we'll be finished. Seems like that's an impossible thing, but that is true. Do we black line this? Yeah. Uh, no, because we're going to paint the background in black. Oh, okay. 
Bathroom. Yeah, between where his legs are. Oh, that looks cool. And that will make your um, colours pop. Now again, I need to get some more paint. I've been shortchanged on the paint line. Oh my god! I know. I need to keep getting paint. And everyone else in that. Oh, Batman! Look at this. <laughs> I'm still on mine. No, I have heat. I don't know why I haven't got enough paint. It's because you've been using so much. Because this is fine. Because the colour comes through, but canvas isn't safe. Okay, everybody happy and everybody keeping up? Where's Tom? Nanny, Tom went to a friend's house last night and stayed up playing Fortnite and uh, till 2 a.m. Then he was sleeping in the garage and uh, because they thought that was best for social distancing or something and he didn't sleep because it was too cold. So when he came back today, he was a bit of a cranky mess really. So he's gone home and gone to bed. So he didn't come today. He did have dinner with us, but he didn't really speak, and his face was kind of like a fiddle. So I went, you know what? You don't, you don't need to come. You don't need to come today. All right, I'm now going to change to red. Again, I'm not going to wash my brush. I'm just going to roll my brush into the red. And we're going to start over where the ear is here, and we're going to put red in. Red at the top. And this is where you have to be careful because you're going to start filling in the gaps now. So try not to smudge your colours. If you have to, then use the point of your brush to really paint in between the colours. You don't want to smudge the colours that you've done. I need some more red. Oh my god. You ever just started using the red? I didn't top my red up. I topped all the other colours and I didn't top my red up. Ooh, just spilled it everywhere. Alright, so red at the bottom here. Remember, try and keep that little shape that you've got that you created for those ears. Don't get rid of those sort of that sort of little square shape at the bottom. I've just realised that my red's dripping all over the floor. That's where my red's gone. <laughs> I've got a splatter all over the floor. Is there red paint everywhere? Yeah, there's red paint everywhere. That's okay. Right, look, the first bit of red is going down here on the leg. Woohoo! Change it up, change it up, change it up. And there's a tiny bit of red on this side of the leg. Who knew? All right, I'm going over to the trunk now. Now, there's quite a bit of red on the forehead. So watch me. It kind of goes across that centre piece. And then it goes up that side. So this is the transition between the light and the dark here. You can paint this a kind of randomly shape. Don't worry about making it exactly the same shape as me, as long as it's kind of in a similar sort of place and looks kind of similar, that will be good enough. Okay, we don't have to get really, really stressed about is my shape the same as Karen's? The chances are it's not going to be and that is absolutely fine. Oh my god, I love the colours on this painting, don't you? Yeah, I still have a lot of work. So people, gorgeous friends and family, um, my little crew of painters, I was thinking about what shall I do with all this artwork that I'm churning out. I've got so flipping much of it. Shall I run a competition? What's your advice? What ideas have you got? Should I run a competition and let people win my artwork? Because I can't, I can't keep all of it. I need to do something with it. So what is your suggestions? It's not really valuable at all to auction or something like that, or really even to sell. I guess if somebody wanted to buy it, they could. But I was thinking about maybe running a competition. 
And then, you know, people could win an artwork maybe. What ideas do you think? Have you got any ideas? Let me know. Because in a minute, if I carry on, oh my goodness, I'm gonna, I've done 60 classes so far. So you can imagine I've got art coming out of every orifice nearly. Kids, you'll have to ask your mum what orifice means. <laughs> every hole. I was about to ask. <laughs> means hole, coming out of everywhere. You know, don't you, Daisy? I've got heaps of art. Yep. Mm -hmm. And there's only so many walls I've got in my studio, and I keep thinking, I gave some art, I uh, gave, gave a couple of bits of art away today to a couple of people that came to the studio. Um, they were from my classes that I teach children, um, you know, in my normal after-school art class. I gave them a couple of, couple of, couple of, a little turtle and a little dragon away today. All right, that's my red. Looking, looking good. Give to the local kindy. Hmm? Good idea. Queensland Children's Hospital, good idea. Nursing homes, good idea. I will definitely do that, that's a great idea. <laughs> Thanks, Ren, I'll definitely do that. I think that's a good, really nice idea. Now, the last bit of hot is using pink. So I've got a Cerisi pink here. If you haven't got pink, mix red and white together and add a tiny touch of blue and you should get Cerise pink, okay? So I'm adding in some pink there. This is the last of our hot colours now. Are we filling in the... Don't fill in all of it because we're adding in some green on this ear, okay? There will be some green in a minute. All right? Yeah. Just let me finish painting the pink, Harry, and then I'll come over, okay? All gone quiet. It's weird when it goes quiet. Hopefully there's <laughs> lots of it's weird for us, but hopefully you're at home chatting away so it doesn't go quiet. And actually you're thinking it's better when it is quiet, Karen, because you stop talking. Probably. Probably. Now at the moment, it doesn't look balanced and it doesn't look balanced because obviously we have all of the hot colors and none of the cool colors. Would white be considered as a hot or cool color? Well, it's a highlight. So I've washed my brush out. And I'm going to add in, on the left hand side, I'm adding now the light green and I'm adding it to all of the white sections that are left on this side of the ear. Now you need to be super careful that you don't smudge it because it will make brown. So make sure you paint carefully in the little patches that are left. So I'm just using the tip of my brush and I'm just kind of dabbing it in those patches. Oh that looks good. So you've just got to be super careful because you don't want to smudge your colours, okay? 
So the bright green just really adds a bit of vibrancy. Okay, this funny zigzag that we had at the beginning, or that triangle spot between the whites, that's where we're going to fill up green. So that's what that little space was there. So I'm just adding in some patches of green, so just follow where I'm adding them in. Spaces left. That's okay, just put them in some other spaces then, Harry. Or yeah, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, just put them where it feels comfortable. If you don't have the same spaces as me, that's okay. Just, you can see vaguely where I'm putting them. Find some areas on your own painting where you think, yep, yeah, that's going to work, and just jot them in, okay? You can hear you talking after you finish talking. So I've just got some green around the eye there. And then I'm going to fill in that little spot there. Now the trickiest bit, children, if you're painting with mum and dad at home or granny or family or whatever, is trying not to mix these colours. It's very tempting to kind of mix them in, but you just want to lay down the colour and not mix it in, okay? So it's just a case of stroking it down. And can you see, like on my brush there, I've got some orange. Just turn your brush over so the orange doesn't smush, okay? You don't want to smush the colours. Feels like it is tricky, but um, it's, yeah. Don't my No? Looks perfect. There's no wrong, Harry, it's just a different interpretation, and that is fine. If everybody felt like theirs was wrong, then nobody would try different things. So it doesn't matter if it looks slightly different than mine. It doesn't matter if you've got things in slightly different places. That's okay. It's okay to have it slightly different. That makes individual art, and that we celebrate. I don't want people to get stressed out thinking it doesn't look exactly like mine. I'm here to guide you, inspire you, and help you try to do something you might not be used to doing. But I'm not certainly here to tell you that you're doing it wrong, or my way is the only the way, okay? That's, that's mm -hmm. I think, bad teaching, personally. It shouldn't be like that. Where do you do the E's? Where does it end so they can link it back around? Here. Not on mine, because, like... Just paint as far as you want, because we can trim the paper later. No, if you look, um, do I paint all the way up to the corner? No, no, just, just, just paint. So if you only want to do there, just cut that off there. So you, you'll need to, so for example, there's a bit of green up there. So you need, that's the oh. top of your picture. Okay. Yep. That looks really good. That looks really good. I've crowded it too much. No, it's fine. You've done a really good job. Harry's being very hard on himself, people. Yeah, I know. Very hard on himself. That's amazing. He's 10 years old and he's given it a go and I'm proud of him. What? Slow down, hot town, please. I will do. Still on pink. Okay, perfect. So if I slow down, it means that I get to eat the rest of my carrot cake and I'm going to go around and show you the families. Still on pink. All good. Right, I'm going to give you a close-up of mine. So you can see how I haven't blended them together. You can see then... All right, so you can just see that it is just lumps of colour. There's no blending. It's just lumpy, dumpy, 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 blob, 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 blob. Naomi... <laughs> I assume that that is Noah that's doing a thousand oh my gods, oh my god, and not you. That's hilarious! 
<laughs> All right, let's go round. Look, cake, gone. Just gone. Gone. Lovely pistachio there. Side up, enjoying it. All right, let's have a look at David's. Looking good, Deebs. Matches your wig. Matches your wig, it does. Let me see. Oh, the, certainly green is your colour. Where's my glasses? Where's your glasses? Okay, we're going to go for the full look. The full Monty. The full, Mon Mon full Monty. That's later, baby. Yeah. Oh, my husband, I can see why I fell for you. You are the bomb. I'm special. <laughs> you certainly are. Harry, where's your wig gone, Hazza? Harry, where's your wig? Oh, got ditched. That looks superb, Harry, I have to say. Hey, everybody, if you like Harry's, give him a thumbs up. We put that extra paper on the side look, made it wider for him, and I have to say it's looking fantastic. Good job. Daisy Bessel, very nice. It looks a bit weird. No, it oh. looks gorgeous. Mm. Yeah, it looks gorgeous. The eyes look great. We'll look good when we paint those in a minute. They look a bit big compared to yours. I, I yours like it. Small splodges in them. <laughs> Nah, all good. I like it. I like yours and they're mine. My lovely thank you sign. Thank you, health workers. You are amazing. And then back around the front. See, I even put my rainbow tablecloth on for you, look, people. I'm going to show you around a little bit, look. This is my art wall of my students. This is my little sewing booth with a couple of sewing machines and all my fabric corner. Then that's one of my teaching um, blackboards. I've been making some paper today. I showed everyone how to make some really cool paper that you can use for collaging. So it's just literally watercolors. I did a cool page and look, that's on the back of one of my Montmartre canvas pack. You can, you can create off anything. This was my shopping list of all of my ladies that wanted art materials. So I've just painted on top of that. And that's a piece of hot that I can cut up and use for collage. This one here was a piece, it was a storybook. It's an Enid Blyton, The Runaway Tales. I just painted on a, a storybook to create a piece of paper. And this one here is a piece, piece of paper towel. And I drew with textures or felt it pens and then I just sprayed it with kind of a garden sprayer and it bled and made this beautiful rainbow piece of paper. So that was my little experimentations today. Here's all my materials. I am kitted up to the nines. And then we have the make it corner. Had a bit of a tidy up of that, that this week and added in lots more stuff, beads, wooden bits shiny things string corks obviously everything you need to go nuts which is really cool and then today i also had a massive tidy up of my this is this is behind the scenes this is shh this is where it all happens this is where i do all my developing of my ideas stuff to buy things to do all my planning you get to see all the secret stuff there's all my paper, all nicely neat. There's all my paints look in a lockable cupboard. And then a load of junk under there. So that's a quick look around the studio. This is a, a deep view for you. Normally I have the tables in a different configuration. I normally have really long tables right down the middle for teaching. But obviously we're sipping paint at the moment. We've got them there. Harry's got his wig on now. Oh, he's going to give me some bubbles. Look at that. Party, party, we're having a party, we're having a party. Right, I'm going to put this back on the stand, otherwise people won't be able to copy the painting. Everybody's probably fed up of that. All right. I'm waiting for them to catch up and they're going, how can we catch up? We can't even see the picture. I get it, I get it. All right, so people, let's have a catch up. We've done yellow, we've done tangerine, we've done orange. We have done red, we have done blue. No, we haven't done blue. We've done pink and we've done green. I don't know why I suddenly went into French then. That's very peculiar. 
Okay, I need you to wash your brush. We are going to start doing the cool colours. We're going to start doing the cool colours, so I need you to catch up with me now. Is everybody ready? We have been going for an hour and an hour and 20 minutes. We want to get this finished in the next 15 minutes, people. So let's go. Let's motor. I need you to put blue and white together to make a pale blue. Blue and white together to make a pale blue. Blue and white together to make a pale blue. If you don't have white, because you're using watercolour, then you need to basically make a more of a watery colour, okay? I just had to get some white, so I'm just going to stand in front of the canvas. Okay. Now, there's a bit of cool on this side, all right? So we're going to add just starting green. Okay, Kelly, well, I'm going to keep powering through, sweetheart, okay? You'll catch up because you can see the colours. All right, we're going to put some blue above the eye there. This is the pale blue. Every time I paint this at um, Sip and Paint normally, everybody's always doing it at different speeds. But um, the key thing is that you don't want people sat idle, kind of bored waiting. So it's important that I keep going so that everybody... Sorry, I'm just concentrating. Don't want to smudge into my green. You want to paint either side of my green. So that's not a pale blue there. Okay, now the pale blue really is going this side of the trunk, and we're kind of drawing those lines. And watch me. I'm I'm trying not to paint over the orange, the yellow, and the green. So I'm painting along the line. And I'm kind of dropping the paint and pulling it off. So I am painting, but I'm not smushing and mushing the colours together. So I'm picking up some paint. Every time I start again, I'm picking up more paint. Otherwise, you will blend the colours and you don't really want to. You kind of just want to drop it on. It is a little bit time consuming, so just take a deep breath and just, just lay those colours on, okay? It will look lovely when it dries because it will have a nice bit of texture to it, this painting. If you're using watercolours, then it will be much easier for you. With acrylics, it's a bit more tricky because with, they're a bit more chunky. And you don't want to suddenly create loads of brown, so you do need to kind of drop it and just kind of pull the brush across without smushing the, cl the colours. So you can see where I've added the pale blue there and I've kind of gone across the trunk a little bit. That looks really good. Who, mine? Harry's. Oh. And yours. Daisy said that looks really good but she meant Harry's not mine. I'm, I'm offended. I said yours as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, a bit of pale blue here on this side of the trunk, uh, the tusk. That's cool. So I know that you will be still doing green maybe, don't panic. You can see where the colours are going. And there's no real technique to teach you. So, you know, I've taught you the technique already. So that's the thing, that's why I'm not that worried that we're all at different stages, because ultimately we are now just putting on colour one by one. And there'll always be some people that paint quicker than others, and that's just the way life is, isn't it? It's always the way everybody finishes things at different speeds. Like running races. Like running races, like finishing exams. Swimming. Yeah, swimming races, whatever. Everybody's got different... And obviously the more you... If you paint regularly, then you're a little bit more confident with your painting. So perhaps you're going a little bit faster. I finally need extra paint. Oh. 
And like I said, if you're using um, colored pencils, if you're using textures, if you're using crayons, then every time you lay on a color, I would be doing them in a different direction because that will help to give you a really, really nice patterning technique, which when you don't have the dimensions of paint, then it helps you just to give you um, some texture to your painting, that uh, picture, sorry. So like I say, if you've got your colours and maybe you've filled up areas and you don't have the same spaces where I'm putting them, don't worry about it, okay? Just don't start thinking, oh my god, I've done it wrong. It really isn't that much of a problem, okay? It really isn't. At the end of the day, it's a rainbow elephant. Um, it can just be rainbow. And we're going to do some strong lines later, which will help to re-emphasise everything anyway. Okay, once you've done that pale blue, I want you to mix a bit of the cerise pink in with your pale blue area. And that's gonna get you whatever purple you get, it's whatever purple you get, and that's fine. So some people's might be slightly darker. Mine is a bit like a lilac color. But it should be slightly different to that pink. And all I'm going to do is, where the pink is, I'm just going to add some of that purpley. Mine's a lilac. Yeah, mine's like a lilac too. So I'm just adding some of the pinky purpley tone. I'm going to call it purple, but it's not a very heavy blue purple. It's very, uh, well, lilac is exactly the colour it is, really. So I'm just, you can see where the red and the pink is. I'm just adding a little bit of that lilac colour. Is it more pinky? Yours is a bit pinkier? Mine's a bit more blue. Yeah, that's okay. Mine looks good. Yeah, Dad's like his mine. Oh, I know Dad's is also mine. Like Everyone's will be slightly different. Yeah. So really, I've just sort of spotted those wherever there's pink and red. And actually, if I look at the original painting, there isn't very much of this color at all. But I yeah. think it's a really important transition color between warm and cool because it's got blue in it which is a cool colour and it's got pink in it which is a hot colour so it really helps the transitioning so for me I think it really is important to add this colour in okay. if you don't like this colour, can't make this colour, don't want this colour, don't put it in all right and it doesn't really matter where you put it in just have a look at mine put it somewhere similar oh. <laughs> Let's see what comments everyone's going. Starting green, no, sorry. Okay, anybody got any comments they want to share with me? Anything they need to say? So just then we've done the, after the green, we did the cerise pink. And after the pink, we mixed it with some blue and we did the kind of lavender color. Or what do we call it? Lavender. It wasn't called lavender. Lilac, that's the one. Thank you, David. Is everybody having a nice evening with their family, with their neighbours, with their friends? Yes. Thank you, Harry, for saying yes. Daisy said no. I was joking. Most unfortunate choice. I was joking. It was a joke, yes, I Or for those of you that are at, in the morning, Hopefully you're having a nice morning, painting, setting yourself up for the rest of your Saturday.
Brisbane friends, I want to show you this. Do, do, do. If you haven't picked it up on sale on Wednesday, is Art Materials in Aldi. They have paints, 90, 99 cents a tube. They have brushes. They have watercolour markers. They have pencils, textures, canvases, a really gorgeous, if anyone's got a birthday coming up, that's a lovely present for your child there. They've even got easels, look, $39.99. And if you hate everything you've done with me, they've got paint by numbers. <laughs> so, just thought I'd let you know, this is today's catalogue. Thank you very much, Die Broad, for dropping that at my house. What? It was the next door neighbour. I thought it was Di. Oh, it wasn't Di, it was my next door neighbour. Thank you, my next door neighbour. Sorry, I don't know where I got that from. I did think that was strange. Well, that's really good because um, all of the shops in the Gap at the moment are shut that do art materials, pretty much, except for the news agents. And no offence, but theirs is quite pricey. And um, so I've been buying stuff on my educator's discount and I, today I had a little shop going. I didn't put any markup on it. It was literally just to allow people to have some paints to do sip and paint. But um, it will be helpful if you still need some bits and pieces to be able to use that uh, and enjoy that next week. Okay, we're gonna add some blue in now, guys. And pretty much the dark blue is gonna be all the areas that are left. Whoa, I know. That's big. Well, what? It is big. Why is that saying no battery? Oh my god, the battery it is for me. Because you, you've done like small colours, then I've done like bigger lines. I think that's fine, Jason. So it is quite a long, large area, and we're going to do a deeper blue after we've done this main blue. But we're going to do this main blue first. So, exactly the same as I did on this light blue area, I'm going to start on this side, and this is my cool side, so I'm going to fill in the whole area. And then I'm going to do the line going across where the crease is. So I've got to do each one of these, mind you, task. <laughs> Sorry, that was a little little bit of air coming out from my side of that I've been drinking. A burp. A grumble. A little grumble. Didn't yesterday say you didn't like the soda? And now up here, so I'm being super careful around my tusks. And I'm trying to get that that the crease of the nose over the middle without without um without messing up all of those paint colours. Okay, this bit down here going round the end of my tusk. And the bottom of the trunk. there so you can see I'm just filling in the gaps I'm really 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 not um, mixing the colors now I'm, because I don't want them now the, the outside of this trunk is uh, sorry tusk is all blue so I'm going to go all the way down in fact I can just see that I missed the white on that tusk there so I need to quickly paint that in Let me just go and get some more white. Hey, they look amazing! Guys, your paintings look amazing! Looks super good. Harry, that's lush. I don't have any more room. It's alright, it's fine. Just do what you can. No, the very nice, David. I'm a bit woke. 
That's okay, Rogue is fine. I have too much room. I'm all for Rogue, aren't I, people? No, I went Rogue. Oh, now I've got mm -hmm. some pink on that one. That's okay. That's okay. If you've gone a bit rogue and you've taken things in your own direction, then that's fine. Maybe you've got a spotty elephant. Who knows? This is our Elmer elephant, isn't it? Or yeah, I love that patchwork elephant. That's right. He's a patchwork elephant. That's right. All right. Just done that bit of blue in there. Yeah. Now, when I'm going around the eyes, I want to be super careful here, so I'm just trying to get that dark bit there between the blue and the green. And I'm just going around the eye socket there. That bit there is white, so I'm now having to sort of look in the light to see which bits are canvas and which bits are white. I'm not going to do the eyes yet, we're going to come back to the eyes. That bit there is white, so all of this here is blue. Need some more blue. Harry, have you done? Have you? Mm -hmm. can, you yeah. can you grab me some more blue? Yeah. I accidentally um did the eyes because I just was following in all the colours. That's okay. It looks pretty blue. Dark blue. Yeah, what? the dark blue. Yeah, that's all that really is. Oh my god. What are you saying oh my god for? How are your colours mixed in that? Oh, I don't know. My, my colours always do. It's an artist paint palette, Harry. The palette looks so cool. Literally, there's no paint left. Okay, underneath this tusk here, down there, I'm just going to leave a tiny bit of white there, where um, so I can see where the trunk was. Because I need to overlay. says yes facetiming with friends and watching facetiming with friends we love that we love that you're connecting with friends having a saturday night chicken kicking sorry checking in with me painting with your friends i think that is just stunning and beautiful and long may we continue and i have to say that even when covid uh, restrictions are lifted and we all go back to our normal life, I will still be doing these online because I think it's been fantastic and hopefully you've enjoyed it um, and I'll still be offering them online so you can do them at home. How does that sound? And then she said, multitasking is hard but getting there. Oh, good. Multitasking is hard, sweetheart. Um, Evie Skinner is on light blue. She's on light blue, beautiful. And then again, doing good may have painted o over all my white. If you've painted over all your white, you can let it dry and then you can paint over some white later. Okay, you can do some highlighting later. So don't be too upset and worried about that. Okay, so I have now finished all the gaps with the dark blue. And the next thing to do, look at my palette. Harry was laughing at my palette. The next thing to do with my blue brush is to mix it into the red and the orange 
Look at that. Ugh, that's gross. It is gross. And I'm making a very kind of dark Brown. brownie colour. For what? But I want it to be mostly ready orange. And you'll, you should end up with a kind of burgundy, a very deep burgundy colour. Okay? Which I'm then going to use. I'm going to change my brush to a smaller brush. I can find it. Mm -hmm. So I just used the blue and the red together. Added in a bit of that cerise pink and you should end up with some kind of deep burgundy colour. If, you if you're not using paints like this or you're using watercolours or pastels, then just find a dark uh, kind of deep ready brown. And we're going to use this for going round and putting our lines back. So you can see that we lost all of those lines when we put in all of our colour. So I'm just going to use that colour to kind of outline my ears. Like that. So it basically becomes a darker, dark, the darkest tone, other than black, which will be our background. This is going to be our kind of darkest shallow line. If you don't want to do this and you're happy with it without it, then don't do it. But I do think it helps to kind of divide the colours and just gives that kind of like outline that sometimes, you know, it gets a bit lost. So I'm going to go over the tusk area. And I'm going to use it to go around my tusk. I'm not going to go around the, the legs of the elephant. I don't need to do that because in a minute we're going to paint black. So I don't need to do that at all. But it's the inside part of the elephant that's most important. So that you can sort of help to define all the bits and shapes that you've coloured in. So for example, I'm going to, where my blue is there, I'm just going to add, this is kind of like the last shadow line if you like. So I'm just adding in the trunk line. And again, going round and creating that kind of bumpy texture. Oh, look what I did. Did you? I dropped my brush and studied the canvas. But luckily, that's going to be black, so it doesn't matter. Oh, cool. <laughs> Clumsy. Clumsy mummy. So I'm just using that burgundy colour to really create a really deep, deep shadow. Mine's not that dark. Uh, add in some more blue. Where's yours? Add in some more blue, Daisy. This looks it's not blue. It's not dark. Though. Add in some more blue. I just did. Oh. It looks now. It looks like aqua. There's like navy aqua. Well, in that case, it hasn't got enough red. Red and blue will make the burgundy colour. I'll get you some more red. Add in the cerise pink. Okay, now it should work. Is that that's good? It's good for me. And you don't have to go over all of the nose area, you just want to pull it, pull out some of those lines. Just the shadow. That's the colour. Yeah. Yes, it is. Maroon. Yeah, that's the colour it should be, like a maroony colour. Maroon brown. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. I think we're at the exact same colour, Mum. Awesome. And you can see I've just used it, and I'm going to do the same to just divide the face from the ears. Now sometimes when you're painting you get really stressed because when you 
paint, you paint big fat lines. And the reason why you paint big fat lines is you're pressing too hard with your brush. So don't press very hard, just let the brush drag and it will drop the colour and that way you won't get a really, really big heavy line, okay? That sort of thing is, is definitely 100% practice. So the more you practice, the better you will become at it. I have big, big lines. Yeah, well that's okay. I'm just going to paint in that little space there behind the tusk. There's a little bit of white canvas showing. Okay, let me just go around and see how the fam are doing. Looking good, looking good. lovely, is it looking good? good, beautiful. Is it better than it was? Yeah, it's looking great. Let's see what everyone else is saying. Would love to do other animals like this, giraffe, monkey. Oh, awesome, okay, well there's a good, some good top tips. We could definitely do that. It's very fun, isn't it? It's very bright. Very fun, and obviously if we did a giraffe or monkey, Whoa. then... My battery's just gone off a minute, hang on. Let's just check it's on at the wall. I missed going on. Is it on at the wall? I don't know. Well, it's not turning on. Oh. Oh. Technical problem. I need that. All right. We're going to go on to do the eye next. And I'm using that um, burgundy cup. Oh, sorry. I've just jogged the camera. That's okay. I'm using that burgundy colour to draw the eye in. I'm going to colour in the pupil. I love that. I like it also. So. I'm going to colour in the pupil. And in the minute when we do the black, we're going to overlay it with black, but we're just going to do burgundy first. And whilst you've got that burgundy, now this is a bit tricky for me because I can't touch the painting. But I want you just to try and paint those curvy lines around his eyes in that dark colour, the kind of like the, the um, creases. So that's my eyes gone in with the burgundy. And just before I go to black, so I've just painted the eye, painted the actual pupil in with the burgundy colour, painted round the um, crease lines with the burgundy. And then on my tusks, and I'm doing this before I get black out, because once you've got the black, you can't really go back. Now we just want to add some colour to the tusks. So look at this. I'm just getting some yellow, and I'm just going to add some highlights on the curve. Straight down the white. Then I'm going to get orange. You can use whatever colour you want, really. But you just want to add a little bit of colour 
to the actual tusk itself. Don't want loads and loads, just a little bit to help show the roundness of it. A little bit green around the corner tip. A little bit of green. There. Mom, you should see our palettes compared to Harry and Top Dad's. A little bit of green there. And that's nearly the enough, except for I want a tiny bit of pale bluey, lilac-y, and I'm doing this quite watery because I almost want it to be like a shadow. So I'm just going to try and just drag it down on the inside as if there's just a shadow where the tusk curves round. And the rep, that's it. That's all I want to do. I don't want to do much more than that. we just paint it in. If you've got to do this with coloured pencils, you're going to have a bit of arm ache, I think. It's going to be a long time. It's going to be a long time. Get sharpening. Luckily, I have a big paintbrush. Use a big paintbrush. My top tip, and I teach the kids this, is do the line first. So do the two lines like this. Go down one edge first. In one, look, watch. If I press, my bristles go wide like that. So I press, my bristles go wide, and I can just push and drag, and I get a really good straight line. Instead of trying to do this, jog, 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 jog. Don't do that. Just press and drag, and let it drag down. And then when you've got a shape like this, use the point of your brush to go in around the ear. Because once you've done the tricky bit like that, it's easy. You just fill in the whole area. I've run out of black, so I'm going to go get some more black. Do we use the big brush? Yeah, but you want to draw around the surface first. So you want to draw around the leg and draw around the ears first before you paint all the rest of the black. Draw around the leg. Draw, draw down the side of each leg by the trunk and then draw around the edge of the ear and then you can fill it in quickly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I used to do. Yeah. Now, personally, I like to add other colours in my black. You might not like this, but I like to add a bit of blue and things in my black because it stops it from being super flat. That's a pure choice thing, okay? You might not want to do that. You might just want it to be jet, jet black. That is entirely up to you. I like, I like just having, you know, that raven colour look. So I always add a bit of blue or a bit of red into my blacks just to um, break up the harshness of the colour. It's very arty. It's very arty to add colour in black. It's very arty. So if you want to be very arty, you might want to add some colour into it. So I might add pink into this bit of black like this, and then you just you just mush it in, and it just takes. You can hardly see it, but sometimes when it's up on the wall, you just get that little tone variation, and it just stops it from being really really fat. Fat black is the is the arty term. Fat black. Should I change it? So I've done bluey black on this side. You can see, look, you can just mix it in, add black in with it, and it, it, it to the naked eye you can't really see it. And I dare say, if I hadn't explained that to you and I said what colour is that, everyone would just go it's just black. But uh, you know, black isn't actually a colour as we all know, is it? It's, it's a, a shade. It's a shade. It's made up of many colours. Made up of the rainbow. It is. Right. All right, switching back to my little brush, and I now want to add some black into my eyes. Black. 
I got love to paint with that on my cheek because I like that. Yeah. And I'm just putting some black line. So I'm not trying to overpaint all of that burgundy. There's no need. That's the shadow. But I'm just, you know, Indian elephants often have like almost eyeliner, don't they? They're really, yeah, you know, heavily. They've got like long eyelashes. They have. So we're just adding in that black just around the eyeball there. And I'm going to add a little dot of white. Oh, I don't know if I can. That one. I don't know if it will drop down. There you go, a little dot of white. And a little dot of white. So you just have to roll that white in, really. Let's see if anyone's got any comments. Ah, oh, my paintbrush isn't thin enough again. Bugger, I think I stuffed it. I'll <laughs> have to get your tips on thin brushes. Okay, so if you only have a thick if you only have thick brushes at home, here is a top tip. Um, obviously you don't want to ruin the brushes that you've got but say you've got an older brush let me go and get an older brush actually I'll, I'll do it on I'll do it live for you there's a kitty brush you can... okay there's a kitty brush mum mum we can't speak they can't hear alright I'm coming back don't panic Mr Mannering all right, say you haven't got a brush at home that's really thin, get a brush like this, put the scissors in. And cut, <coughs> cut half those bristles <coughs> to make it smaller. And then cut it to a point. So you might have to spray them out like that and then cut that way and cut that way. So you wanna cut it to a point. This is very much a DIY. If I were you, I'd wait till Aldi sells brushes next week for $5 and buy some. But if you want to finish your painting and you're really stressed, then this is one way of doing it. I have painted paintings before using uh, makeup brushes. That's another top tip. So you can see, I've, I'm starting to literally shape this paintbrush into a really fine spot. And when I put it into water, And you can see, I can get a nice, oh, I've got no paint on it. If I paint on my wrist, you can see I can get a nice thin line. If I push down, it'll be thick. And then if I paint carefully, I can't get enough paint on it. Often painting, look, if you push down, you get a thick line. But if you paint carefully and lightly, you'll get a thin line. A lot of it is to do with the pressure that you put on a brush. So if you push really hard, that's when you get thin lines. If you kind of hold it very close to the edge and just sort of don't put too much pressure on it, you'll get a thin line, all right? So hopefully that'll help you. It could be the brush or the artist. I think it's the artist. Hello, Auntie Catherine, how are you? Are you joining us today? You said you might have a go with texters. If you've only just joined in, I will sell, save this video and you will be able to do it another time. I'm just going to add in a bit of black there over that eyebrow. Are you doing pink and blue? Yeah. One side's pink, one side's black. Oh, yeah. All right, I'm going to take the um, camera down and we'll go and have a look at how everyone else is doing. Let's have a look at the paintings of the family. Here we go. The Green Goddess. How is the Green Goddess going? Wow, David Bessel. Hashtag nailed it. Give me a high five on that. Look at the difference between my husband and I. My husband's palette, ordered, neat and organised. My palette, chaotic, crazy and mushy. <laughs> okay, come in and have a look at Harry Bessel. Harry Bessel, Harry Bessel, Harry Bessel. How do you think you did out of ten? Six. Six. 
I think we are going for, bearing in mind his, he's got extra paper added in because he went so large. I think we, I think that's easily a nine. Yeah, I love it. High that. five in. Boom. Thumbs Daisy up, Bessel, like look at you. Gorgeous young lady. And what do you rate it? Nine. She went for colored today. She's gone all pink on her outfit. Harry's gone for blue. He's gone the blue outfit. Well, Daddy's gone green. We're doing our rainbow colors. thank you. Thanking our beautiful healthcare workers all around the world. We've got rainbow cushions. We've got rainbow tablecloths. Can you just hold that a minute? And as we finish today, I feel like I need to go back <laughs> to the beginning where it all began. Because I need to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're going to give me some bubbles, are you? Yeah, okay. You ready? We're having a party. Oh, I get my necklace and I get my necklace. Such a beautiful Hold party. I need to put this back on so everyone can carry on painting. Oh, this Let's all give a big clap for our healthcare workers around the world. Let's give a final big clap. Ready? Everybody here? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We've got bubbles coming in. We've got love happening. You can, I'm just going to show you, you can see where I did watercolour, textures and uh, pastels and there's the paint version. This is our rainbow elephant giving you lots of rainbow love and saying thank you from us to you all around the world. Thank you for helping us through COVID-19. I, sorry? COVID. COVID, not COVID. COVID-19. Thank you so much. I am going to let this carry on for those of you that are just finishing painting. What I suggest you do, what I suggest you do is get your phone and take a screen grab, take a screenshot of my elephant. I will post a picture, but that way you can just carry on finishing painting. I'm going to say much love. Thanks for joining me this Saturday. I will see you next Saturday when we do our um, Peruvian pigeons. Take care. Just giving you a couple of minutes. Just giving you a couple of minutes to take a picture of that elephant so that you can finish off if you need to. Thanks everybody, send me your pictures. Send me your pictures and write a review.